This is Kaya 959 on the street and on the air. It's your girl Beasting and it is The Hive. Now, if you know the following lyrics, right? You got to get it right. Skarasa uh, Waisenya. Just lyric ya kupenya. Wawuka ya kupenya. Hasin twenyani. Give the whole thing. Somebody you know? actually went and wrote that down. I <laughs> <laughs> This is Tony like, Black <laughs> in the vicinity from Moravai, Tony. I've never witnessed someone read yes. a binge. <laughs> oh, did you want me to rap it, my <laughs> friend? <laughs> a butcher. Like, oh, did I? Okay, okay. Yes, it should be a guess. A written butcher. You're going to be on my keys for the whole year, buddy. I know butcher, you. And I wrote those lyrics. Exactly. Too. And I know they. I know where you got there from. They're on some site. I once went through the site and I was like, I that's not what Please I Please tell us what it says. You ain't heard the whole thing yet. Yes. Skarasa why senya. Just let it get up in ya. Why you cry out pinya? Hasn't to any give the whole thing. Do you understand? Because when I wrote it, I'm like, mm, that doesn't sound right. Just let it help in ya. No, Rumakwanyan and Tramune reads his call. <laughs> Tony <laughs> Mac from Morafa live right here on Kaya 959. Hey, hey, hey. Now, Tony Mac, mm. you are more than just an artist, right? You're yes. a music producer, songwriter, mm. sound engineer, entrepreneur, and music technology facilitator. Mm. What is a music technology facilitator? Because all the others... You got it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, and that's my passion. Uh -huh. That's like top of my list. Um, music technology facilitator is let me just put it this way let me give you the problem statement yeah? <clears throat> a lot of technology rushes in yeah right and musicians and people that are meant to use that technology are never really reached by the companies that rush this technology in and not only that there's a lot of changes happening in the music industry mm. rapid changes mm. Companies are changing, how labels are dealing with artists is changing. And the artist in the township, in the village, is not privy to all that information. Yeah. They're still trying to get a demo on a CD. Hmm. So you need a program like Backstage Lectures to move into those spaces and say, guys, this is what's happening. This is, these are the, prob the new problems presented by you know, this new, the advent of social media or the advent of DSPs or you know the internet at large but these are the advantages and these are the things and the areas you can take advantage of only more village more only more township more you know mm -hmm. so that's what backstage lectures so in a nutshell is about. when did you start backstage lectures wow um okay so so okay i'm going to tell you when and why yeah <laughs> so if, if that was your follow-up question yes. i'm going to hit it <laughs> so because they are connected, you know, the when and the why are connected. Yeah. I got into teaching just because my grandmother was a teacher, you know, all of her daughters were teachers, you know, by right, teaching different things. Mm -hmm. And my aunt, Manitsidi, actually was a choir conductor and she taught music, yes. you know. So it's not so far fetched. My mother was on radio. Yeah. So so that kind of gave birth to my wanting to understand the, the, the concept of this industry, of this world of music and broadcasting in a deeper way, you mm -hmm. know? Because I was, I was exposed as a child to, you know, uh, my mother pre-recording in studio, you know, uh, with Bobra Viktata being, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a phenomenal radio engineer, you know, um, and guys like that. So, so coming from just looking while these guys are at work. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you can understand. Yeah. Like I was inspired differently from other kids who were just watching it from a screen or hearing it from, from a speaker. Mm. I was watching the behind the scenes the whole time. So when we got into uh, the music industry and we got into music, I quickly realized that, hey, <coughs> I wasn't in love with the fame you know mm. so i immediately started getting books and learning about music business you know the business side of things and you know why do these guys talk like this what is this what is that what does that term mean so i started getting all these books and then i ran into this jonathan shaw book it was fresh mm. 
um lnb was still up you know i remember i wanted to go to lnb so bad you know and then there was this course um um arts technology or performing arts technology go 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 pitor you know i wanted to do that course so bad so so what i would do i'd befriend people who were doing those courses mm. and i would just learn the jargon and the definitions of the processes and the equipment and you know and and I would then go out to libraries and kind of find those books and, and learn and learn and learn. So come the opportunity for me to teach. Mm. I, I've, I'm like, you know, Morafe, we've just started Cooley's career. KG is working for Jeva's band. I'm like, I want to work a nine to five, but something that has to do with music. Yeah. Right? I, it was like a personal experiment. So I went, I was looking for a job on radio. I was looking for a job there, job there. Then, I, then there was a college that said, hey, man, we need somebody that can come and teach music production. Hmm. And there isn't, at the time, there isn't a qualification for music production. So they're just pretty much calling in people to see who can do this thing. Yeah. Uh, bro, I walked in there with a, you know, ready to, ready to give class. Like, I walked in there like I had been hired. Uh, Everybody came for an interview. I came to work, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So uh, they asked me when I got when it was was my chance. So okay, here's what I realized while I'm sitting in line. Now the only guys with an actual qualification in music production are guys that studied overseas, hmm. right? Because there were no schools here. Yeah, in South Africa. That. Yeah. So that kind of got me intimidated, you know. So I kind of started thinking, okay. I got to gather my experience, you know, Marafi, yeah. I've worked with so-and-so, I've done this, I've done that, I know, I've been in studio with so-and-so, I can do, so I'm just recalling everything in my head. When it's my chance to go in there, these guys, you can tell they're bored, it's, it's Martin Willems uh, and Vainant Mans. Yeah. These, these two guys are the two guys that then got to expand my brain and just teach me things beyond, you mm -hmm. know, which got me to where I am today. And these two guys, one of them was the owner of the school, the other was the school director, right? And they asked me a few questions, realized that, hey, this guy is self-taught because there are certain things that are like basic that he doesn't know, but there's certain knowledge that he has that is like, oh, we, we've never looked at it like that, mm. you know? So they gave me <coughs> a book. I think it was the sound engineering textbook. They, let, they were like, Okay, read the first chapter and then come back and teach it to us as, mm. if, as if we don't know anything. So I go, it was the fundamentals of sound engineering, yeah, because it was about, you know, the anatomy of the human ear, <clears throat> why we do EQ from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz because that's the hearing range of the human ear, stuff that I already self-taught myself, right, mm. <clears throat> out of interest. But now I was learning the jargon. I was learning all that thing that I used to call thingamajig, now here's the name, here's the you name know, and it, yeah. and that you know musicians we like we like to say hey, man, I <laughs> now, now I was finding the names, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and yes. the processes, you know. So after I quickly studied the the, I, I read through the chapter. I went back and said I'm ready. I made my own notes. Ne? I wasn't gonna use the book, so I put it to the side. They're like, you're not gonna use the book. I said no. I made my own notes, and my notes were. In like two or three Q sheets, you know, like Q, those little squares, yes. you know, stick, stick it, yeah. <clears throat> so they're like, okay, that, that's all your notes on the whole chapter? I said, yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> hey, man, the way I broke down fundamentals of sound to those guys, at the end of my presentation, Vaynant Mans couldn't wait to say, yo, man, uh, okay, you know what uh, give us your number what's what's your number what's your where do you stay where do you i could tell already yeah okay there's going to be deliberations here about a week or two later i got a call vainan says yo man you got the job mm. out of that whole group of people it was two of us who got the job the mm. other guy was a surround sound 5.1 mixing engineer uh, lawrence penkler who i also learned a lot from you know french dude um, so, so it's out of all this wealth of knowledge that I got from the college and, and in, the, in those four years teaching, <clears throat> this was between 2020, 2010 to, to 2013. Mm -hmm. 
so I, I, I sponged up so much, you know, that I was like, there's so much that kids, Kokasi, whose parents can't afford this tuition, they, they need this, this information, information, you yeah. know? Like, just because your parents can't afford this amount of money doesn't mean now your talent must go to waste, mm -hmm. you know? So I started thinking, man, I need to do something. So I, I'm one of those guys that have like five, six, seven CCs, you know? I'm always opening a company. Mm. And <clears throat> so, you know, it came a time when I had to like clean up, <laughs> you know, and yeah. say, you know, what is my business? And mm -hmm. What do I do? And that's when I got into backstage lectures. I was like, everything I do is going to be led by backstage lectures, even to a point after several years, 2019, I went into radio. I was still doing backstage lectures yeah. on radio. So backstage lectures has lived in halls, in auditoriums, in townships and villages, on radio. And now it lives every day also on social media. Mm. <coughs> so... It's something that I've never put boundaries to, yeah. you know. And, you know, the reason why I do it is so that there's, there's you know, if, if we all know more in this room, there's better inspiration for somebody watching us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm passionate about sharing knowledge because you could inspire me better than I'm inspired right now just based on how you process what I teach you. Mm. Because we don't process information the, the same. same. You know, so you could bounce something right back at me and I would be like, wow, I never saw it like that. Because your personal experiences could help you process it in a way that could teach me something. So inspiration comes from people having learned stuff, people having learned from people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> you have a Casper today, a Madlera Doughboy today because there was a Kulichana, because there was a Double HP, because there was a crowded crew at Buffy Cleaver, you know. And if all that wasn't witnessed and shared and absorbed, uh, uh, you know, the younger generation wouldn't be inspired, yeah, inspired uh, for tomorrow, you know. So, yeah. That's mm. Now, you know, <coughs> uh, one of the things that I've realized in the music industry, yeah. which I've ran away from, Shem, contracts. Yeah. I, 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 <coughs> I, I do believe that it should be one of the... Here's my, here's my thing. I talk a lot about contracts yeah. in my workshops, you know. And one of the first things I say about contracts is this. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, nobody drafts the contract between you and them with your best interests hmm. at heart. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> nobody. Nobody drafts a contract between you and them with your best interests at heart. It could be a bank. It could be a school, it could be anybody. <coughs> or sign sang something says, I'm going to get to Malano, I'm going to Malano, I'm going to get to Malano, I'm going to you are being introduced to it today. Yes. Obula account. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. That's the first thing I teach people about contracts. Okay, guys, you are currently, all of us in this room, everybody watching this here, you are currently in contracts you've never read. If you've, if you've, if you've got a, 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 an account on social media and you just clicked accept without reading, you are in a contract you've you never read. read true. <coughs> if you have a bank account, I bet you 99% of mm. us out there have never gone through all that mm. paperwork to you just sign and get your bank card a lot of us if not all of us mm. are out here in con like we living every day in contracts but, we've but, never but read and understood recording labels contracts and a bank's utility <laughs> contract <laughs> like whoa recording labels are yeah, worse no, man they're worse. they're worse yes yes well they're better for one thing though you know i've always liked this like a bank gives you money and they want it back you, you you they want it back the way they gave it to you yeah right and here's what i always tell artists when we're talking about contracts mm -hmm. a record label wants it in the form of something you do naturally for fun mm. that payback mm. so so the way the game is right now 
is if you can popularize yourself before you talk to the record label, then you'll be negotiating from a position of power because you have the mm. people, you have the followers on your TikTok or whatever. So it's easier for you to negotiate. Yeah, that that little girl that was singing Ubabo Ulala Nami on, yes. on, on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. Because it was traceable back to her. Because nobody else could be her. You see, here's another thing. If you're going to go on TikTok and, and do something that the next person can do even better than you, then you're not going to be able to sell yourself. Yeah. But if you're like that little girl who did it, first of all, the backdrop. I always tell people this. Your mud is your gold. Here's what sold that little girl. <clears throat> she was not in front of a, a, a Lamborghini. No. She was not wearing Gucci. Mm -mm. She was not because the Americans have seen all that. They have it. But they don't have a crowded classroom of kids dressed Same. in black and white. And you can see the whole class is hungry. They haven't had food all day. Because at their schools, at their public schools, they have cafeterias. Yeah. We don't. Right now, Madera Do Boy is training. He's had videos with cars, with, you know, this and that, fancy cars, you know, fancy clothes, everything. The one time it's he does a video, Mopile Khadi Komu, in a crawl, Basta Rhymes and Swiss Beats are up retweeting it. So this is what I teach my kids, man. Your mud is your gold. Those things that you don't think highly of, those things that you take for granted, they, those things you might be ashamed of even, that, that's your gold. Mm -hmm. So backstage lectures then, you, you are touching on contracts, you're touching yeah. on marketing. Yes. What other issues uh, or, or, or topics do you touch on? The biggest thing is technology. The biggest thing is how technology is taking over, how technology is changing the game, and how to take advantage of the changes that are happening. Um, right now, it's, it's, it's public knowledge by now that um, Universal and TikTok had this big fight. Yeah. Here's how I would reference that story in one of my classes, all right? which actually I'll be doing very soon. Mm -hmm. um, there are there are disadvantages and there are advantages, right? Mm. Let's start with the disadvantages. The disadvantages are for the artists that are already inside, that are already benefiting from the way, from the changes that, that took place, right? So if I'm an artist and I'm signed to UMG, for example, and UMG pulls my music off of TikTok and my music was getting me popular on TikTok, or my music was made popular by TikTok, I'm at a disadvantage. Mm. Now, if I'm an unsigned artist and people go on TikTok and they're looking for their favorite music and it's not there, I can make an almost similar sounding song and place it directly on TikTok and that can take the place of that song, mm. right? So, so there's many ways to skin a cat at this juncture because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's fair game for yeah. everybody now. But a lot of people are not looking at it that way because the narratives that are being written on social media are it's, it's just fear mongering right people are being taught nowadays to fear more than to be optimistic yeah if you look around you there's so much to be optimistic about do you know that more minerals have been found under the earth over the past couple of years like there's more wealth yeah right yeah and and we just jump over news like that and we're like yeah but there's no electricity <laughs> Earring load shedding moment. Right? Yeah. But we all know load shedding is happening because of politics. Mm. It's not because there's no there's no capacity to to generate electricity. It's because of politics. It's because of, you know, mm. all the crazy stuff that we find ourselves in that we, you, because you know when you over it happens in any business. You overlook one person's transgression. And then you overlook the next one. So by the time the third one, you want to discipline the third one, they tell you about the first two. Mm. And then... The whole thing just messes up. Right? Yeah. And then the, 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 the culture of, of, of opposition as well in this country. Whenever somebody takes a position, there's always somebody ready to point out their blemishes, somebody ready to... So it doesn't matter who wins the next elections. There'll always be somebody ready to say, yeah, but you can't do this. True. So... 
and there'll always be somebody to to expose old news mm. yeah don't trust this guy he once did one two three <laughs> you know <laughs> so uh, I, I like how you you use everyday life uh, examples yeah uh, in in order to have your students actually understand more mm. uh you know how to implement those into backstage lectures yeah. right so if people want to find out more about backstage lectures where can they go and um is it will it be possible for backstage lectures at some point to be online where now you you subscribe for those yeah we're working lessons. on that yes we're busy working on plugberg uh, it's a platform that's gonna i believe revolutionize the game uh we're in the third phase it's a five phase project we're in the third phase now uh we're testing beta for some of it and you know the industry just look information sharing and what i'm doing is something i wish other musicians and other um, arts practitioners do, do yeah. you know and in the media you know everybody i mean if you're a professional at what you do and there's a kid out there looking at these things saying man i want to be like that really it, it it it's your responsibility to share whatever knowledge you can share because the school is not going to share everything yeah and more than likely the textbook doesn't have the knowledge that you have mm. today textbook was published t years ago mm. and things have changed since years ago mm. so they need fresh information uh, companies are looking for experience from kids mm. we can give these kids experience i mean the way we do events now i'll do a backstage lectures ahead of an event you know or i'll partner with an event and say yo man let me take the local kids teach them how to put an event together mm. and then have them work for you to put your event together yeah you know that's less expenses for the guy putting the event together and after i've left these kids have jobs now every weekend every time that guy is working he's working with them now so so backstage lectures kind of um you know inspires communities to start their own economies mm. you know in the arts mm. you know um and it starts with an information and 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 knowledge economy you know it starts with sharing information it starts with saying okay guys because how i do a backstage lecture is i'll go they'll say okay uh we've we, they do a petition like the kids go say text up for example they put together a petition they've done this before they asked uh one of their local organizations yeah Masef, <coughs> ran by uh, Dr. Kuno. Dr. Kuno put it all together, gave me a call, said, hey man, the kids around here put a petition together, said they want backstage lectures. That's how you do it, by the way. And, ah. and then, so I came through, because I don't want the kids to pay, you mm. know. I want an organization to, be the one to buy is, their yes. tickets so that they can come in for free. Yes. So, and then I go there and, and, you know, I share knowledge, I share you know um the the pitfalls you know mm -hmm. of my journey and what, what what can happen in the industry but also the changes and how things have changed and don't listen to everything i say because you can have your own experiences mm -hmm. but most importantly before i facilitate i go there like a day or two before or i do my research if i know people in the area i do my research and say but uh where do where, do, where does this happen where does where do kids register for this where can they where's the nearest dti there you know mm. and if a kid wanted to do one two three four what would where would they have to go you know okay police station do they do affidavits for one two three so i find ways instead of me coming there and say yeah you must go to josie for one two three i get there and i say here are the facilities available within your area that mm. you can use to safeguard your intellectual property before you can go to josie and do one two three so i make it practical for them within their area you know umot like stopo eh bramuli if you think on alessandro you can contact him here and say man i want to learn how to do this mm. you know i can i connect them you know because i know people in the area mm. right and when you do that you're not like one of those people that just come to a kasi and say yeah Rona, we used to do it like this, do it like that. You see, you must go all the way to Josie to Samro and register like this, one, two, three. When, you don't have to. when Samro can come to your hood, yeah. you know, when I can bring a representative from Samro with forms there for them to register present and then our boy got on and show them how to do it online, mm. you know. Uh, 
you know, things have changed. You know, a lot of these things you can do online. You don't need to go all the way to Sambra anymore. You can register online. You don't, I mean, uh, Sampra, Sampra is doing phenomenal work with musicians. All these organizations are now funding projects. You know, if you want to record an album, I think Sampra is giving away 25 grand to applicants. Sampra also has a program like that if you want to do events. Man, there's, and there's these kids, these kids don't know. Mm. You know, uh, the National Arts Council is also like uh, pumping out program after program, uh, uh, funding program after funding program. So uh, it's just about knowing, you know, how to get your company ready. A lot of uh, youth companies are not in good standing because, uh, you know, man, the SMME story, you know, mm. uh, you know, we start businesses to make money, not to solve problems, not to you know establish empires you mm. know and these are the sort of things i teach you don't start a, you don't go and register a company at the dti under the you know impression yeah, once i've registered this company i'm going to start making money mm. it doesn't work that way yeah when you start a business you're trying to you've got a solution mm. you're trying to officialize this solution and you're going to implement this solution, whether it be servicing people a certain way or bringing a certain product that wasn't available in a certain area, or, you know. And if you love music, coming back to backstage lectures, this is a, another thing I teach. If you love music, doesn't mean that you have to sing or rap mm. or play an instrument. There are a whole lot of other careers. There are a whole lot of other things that you can do. You can, if you blind accounting, if you blind uh marketing maybe you you know the blind guy history goes go scale go and do law entertainment law come back help us we need those here you know um these stages that we jump on there were carpenters and and metal mm, workers that built design, these things and yeah. set designers you know go and study those things and come help the industry we we can't just have djs rappers and singers <laughs> <laughs> we need electricians, like you yeah. know, the pika radia chari perform, mamu, because we're all trying to DJ. <laughs> you know? Backstage lectures, yeah, oh, man. Mac, uh, lastly, if people want to find out more about it, what contact details can they use? And then on social media, what do they need to do? Backstage lectures at gmail dot com is the email. Uh, you can also find my wife at Lavinia, at Lavinia Moachi at gmail dot com, and she does all my bookings, and uh yeah man just hit me up and I'll, and then i'll give you the whole details of how you can go about it because i first need to know is it just you or d is there a group of you mm. how many of you there are mm. uh, some people request one-on-ones those are a bit costly but um i'll give you an example somebody who's just bought a studio how about the logo connect what? <laughs> sound card to the computer you call me through, you know, music technology facilitator. Uh -huh. That's what I do. I come through. I don't only help you to connect. I teach you how to connect your own equipment and show you how to use the software and stuff like that. Because while I was at the college uh, teaching at MND, I had to learn quickly how to use different softwares, mm. you know, of music production. So I quickly got proficient in your reason, logic, Pro Tools. You know, I got my Pro Tools 210M while I was there which is like a high qualification in, in the Pro Tools uh, music production, you know. Mm. So, so yeah, man, all this knowledge, I can't go to the grave with it. With it, yeah. You know, uh, there are a lot of people who went to the grave with, with a lot of knowledge, man. Um, my, one of my favorite producers, Jay Dilla, um, you know, a lot of people who talk about him always say, we, when we come together and talk about him, we realize he taught each of us a different thing. Mm you know as producers mm. you know and and you kind of hear it when you hear these producers and the influence they got from Dilla. so i'd like to be like Dilla in that sense i want to give some everybody a little piece of me mm. so that they can go and do whatever they can do with it oh man yeah Tony Mac, thank you so much for coming through to the hive. Even though I did not get where well, Skarasa was singing right, I'm still a fan. And you know <laughs> no, you are reading it. And you I know that my Tumangu Mafikeng are going to be on my case. I'm so maybe still. Ah, she was reading the Pucharin. <laughs> She Thank you so, so much reading. for joining us here at Kaya 959. It's an honor and a pleasure. That is Tony Mack from Morafe, and he was here to chat to us about backstage lectures right here on Kaya 959 on the street and on the air.